Well, we are here today to share some great information about how you can protect yourself from investment scams, especially as we're seeing the rise during the COVID pandemic. And we have a great uh, panel of two experts. I'm so excited to in introduce Dan Lord with the Alabama Securities Commission, worked with Dan for a number of years and their office does a phenomenal job. And we also have Jace Jason Blankenship with Better Business Bureau. He is our vice president and he is also gonna be sharing tips from BBB. So I'm gonna start with Dan. Dan, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your office and the services that you provide? Okay, in the state of Alabama, we regulate what we call Main Street investing. That's if you go to the corner and there's somebody has a sign up and offers a financial advisement or to buy and sell stocks or to uh, give you financial advice for a fee they have to be registered with the Alabama Securities Commission. And uh, that's one of our greatest things. We're a state government agency that is self-funded through revenues. It's always good to be a profit organization for the state. And uh, we're very interested in protecting people. Uh, the type of crimes uh, that hit uh, people involving investment often take their whole life savings or nest egg. If you're a senior, you don't have time to earn your money back. Uh, the registration process is one of the greatest things uh, that you'll see our number and everything because let's say uh, somebody from Alabama called Jason and said, hey, I got a great deal. I wanna, if you give me $5,000, I'm gonna buy and sell some land. There was a storm here recently. There's some great deals. I'm gonna double your money. Okay, well, that's, that's fine and dandy but they have to be registered with the Alabama Securities Commission. Suppose somebody calls from Georgia to Alabama and says, hey, I got a great deal. After the storm, we, we bought some land, we're gonna sell and make you a lot of money. Uh, you give me 5,000, we'll double it in two months. Uh, that's fine, but they have to be registered with the Alabama Securities Commission. <laughs> Jason, can you tell us a little bit about your role with BBB and, and about Better Business Bureau itself and where we serve in Alabama? I, absolutely. I, I will echo exactly what Dan said in the fact that education is so important and we believe in uh, the best consumer is an educated consumer and that's large part of what my job is, is to get the word out. Uh, we work with amazing organizations like the Alabama Securities Commission uh, because the BBB is not a uh, government funded entity. We're a self uh, we're a community of self-regulating businesses that believe that together uh, we can stand for trust and we can rest restore trust back to the marketplace. So we, we definitely want to get the word out and, uh, and our four Alabama counties, uh, Lee County, Chambers County, Russell County, and Barber County. And we work, you know, it, we don't stop there for Alabama. We work hand in hand with the Birmingham BBB and other BBBs all across the nation, even Canada, and now we have an office in Mexico. So it's, it's gone international and unfortunately scams are too. Yeah, that's very true. And in case I didn't introduce myself, I'm Michelle Mason with Better Business Bureau. I have the pleasure of working with Jason on a daily basis and with Dan on cases as they come. And, and I can tell you firsthand that uh, anytime we've seen someone contact us with a question about a possible investment, that's in Alabama, or if the resident is in Alabama, when we've checked with the Securities Commission there, if they're not registered, they will take very quick action to address that with the company, most likely issuing a cease and desist order or getting them registered immediately and investigating what they're doing. So Dan, thank you so much for all you do with in that area. All right, we're getting now into the really real reason that we're here today, which is to make sure we're giving away some great information to help people, as you can see on the screen, not give away the farm. So we have a, a theme here that we're going to ask Jason to talk a little bit about to tie into how we help you remember the ways to protect yourself. Jason? Absolutely. Now, I'm just a simple guy, and I have to break it down on the simplest uh, rung to really understand it. Um, and we've got the expert here with Mr. Dan. He's going to help us fill in the blanks with the, the technical stuff for sure because he's way smarter than I am. But, you know, there was a farm, and uh, – old mcdonald's farm he was around and he had a dog and on this farm his name was bingo that's right here's there bingo. Go. <laughs> we're, we're glad bingo's here and this is just a simple way for us to remember not 
not just the technical qualities of many scams because the three of us can tell you about scams all day long to are blue in the face. But what we want to do is we want to teach you the five principles that are present in most scams and we'll relate them back to the other scams and we're going to use the acronym named bingo. And so the first letter in the acronym is B. All right. And as you can see, B in this case stands for beware. And I know we have a lot of examples that we're going to ask you guys to share about why it's so important that people beware and be wary when they are considering um, investment opportunities or similar types of scams where someone says you're going to get rich quick. So um, I'll let you guys decide who wants to start first on sharing a little bit about what we like to call phantom riches. And I know you have a lot of examples to share. Dan, do you want to jump in there? Yes. Uh, I want to offer you, if you just give me $5,000, I'll triple it in two months. You know, I'm offering you something uh, that has very high abnormal returns and has no risk or little risk. And you're going to give me the money. And in a short period of time, I'm going to sell it to you. And I'm going to pressure you to give me your money because uh, my deal, let me tell you, it is too good to be true. And uh, there's deals out there and there's people that uh, fall into that. You know, they, they think they, it's the same feeling you get when you have that lottery thing, which uh, uh, lotteries are legal in Georgia, but they're not legal in Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> but the Jamaican lottery is not even legal in either one, is it? That's probably true. <laughs> and they can't win the Jamaican lottery without playing the Jamaican lottery. So if you're winning that, then you need to beware as well. That's well, right. normally to participate in the lottery, you go someplace that's authorized to sell a lottery ticket and you give them your money and they give you a, a lottery ticket. These people are sending you something in the mail saying, hey, you won. When you didn't even play, folks, don't be fooled by your own greed factor or your own ideals that, hey, I'm going to be rich and it's going to just fall out of the sky on you. It will I not. Gonna, I was going to say, all of, everything you said sounded great until you talked about high pressure. So you, I'm not going to triple my money in two months. That's not going to happen for, for me to do very little and get my money tripled. Certainly not. Uh, you know, of uh, interest, if you want to get more technical, um, the stock market has traditionally uh, paid uh, from six to nine percent, something like that in, in that range, which is a good return, right? You know, because uh, people say, well, what's a high return? Well, I, you know, in the last few years with the market going up, there have been a lot of mutual funds, which are groups of stocks that return 15, 20 or 30 percent. And, uh, but you go back to 2007, in those years, uh, a lot of people lost 50% of their, mm -hmm. their money in the stock market. So it goes up and down. But, I, you know, anytime you get into double digits, uh, that could be a red flag. You know, somebody says, I'm going to get double your money. Might be something that you want to watch out for. Absolutely. And, and to kind of tie in with that, just another get rich. Um, Jason, I know... We had someone ask today about Publishers Clearinghouse calling them on the phone. Do you want to talk a little bit about that as well? Is there anything we need to be aware of or beware for that? Yeah, and I might actually get interrupted because they're supposed to deliver my <laughs> red Mercedes here in the there next you go. few days. Ah, you got the call um, too. <laughs> yes, and I'm already a millionaire and I'm going to forget you guys in the next, uh, whenever I get my check, okay? Uh, but they're going to deliver me a car, but you know, and it's really nice because a hundred thousand dollar car and then I won 2.5 million, but all I have to do is just pay them the taxes on the money because you know, it, that much money's got to be taxed. And so I'm going to pay them. It's only $2,500. Uh, the craziest thing that I found though was with the $2,500, um, they wanted me to go to CVS and buy a, a prepaid debit card. Mm -hmm. um, have you guys ever heard of this? Because it sounded a little strange, but I couldn't talk with anybody because the, the guy on the telephone, he's, you know, we need to keep it hush hush because <laughs> if, it, if the word gets out, you know, that they're going to pull their offer. 
And sadly, that is a very common scenario. So we're, we're definitely hearing that from lots of folks. And, and that all ties to beware. And I think the best way to capture everything you guys are sharing is that old adage, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. But Jason, Jason had a great point. And uh, let me tell you, folks, I can't think of anybody in the world that would be legitimate if they ask you to to uh, go get a, a, a gift card or a money card from a retail store and send it to them. Uh, I mean, we have people claiming to be the IRS that ask people to do, do that. Yeah. And some people actually do that, or they go to the store and wire money to somebody. No way will you ever pay somebody legitimately by going to a store and buying, uh, putting money on a card and sending it to somebody. No you know, way. Yeah, and there's no paper trail, is that right? Because I know as you guys investigate these things, you're not gonna, you're not gonna find a trail if someone uses those payment services. Well, if they, if, if, once they get the number, they can withdraw the money from the account. That's all that they, right. they want. And they can, the thing is, is they can uh, perpetrate these crimes from anywhere in the world. In other words, it, I don't know if you saw our cease and desist yesterday, if I sent you that, but it's a, a, a gentleman named Baxter. We don't know where he lives, but he's, uh, his office of business is, is an address in Pennsylvania. You see, He may be in another country on the other side of the world. So it is very hard uh, to track down. Right. Well, and Jason, did you want to add something to that? Well, I was just thinking, you know, what Dan was talking about with the IRS calling and, and you know, different people asking different things. That kind of leads into our next uh, letter. I stands for identification. Can I just say that I would love for people to check out the person they're talking to? Make sure it's the person you should be talking to. Right, Dan? Absolutely. Uh, there's, there's so many people that are fooling people. And what we were talking about is, these government people that pretend to be a government agency, and not just on phone calls, but they do this on the internet. Yeah. And they, uh, uh, one of the my partners brought me this thing uh, uh, from his bill uh, to uh, Apple or something like that. And uh, they had two uh, bills. Uh, one and, and and we examined it closely, and, and you could only tell like one letter was different or such. Or at the beginning, it didn't have a safe lock uh, up in the message line that's shown sometimes up in the message line, sometimes in the bottom. Didn't have a HTTP, that's another sign in there of a lack of security. But uh, so, you know what I do, uh, because what they do is like I'm a member of uh, ABC Credit Union. So they know there's a lot of people in ABC Credit Union that live around here. So they send out thousands of uh, messages that your account's been compromised, call us at this uh, toll-free number and, and uh, we'll resolve it. So you're gonna call that number on the internet or on a recorded telephone call and it goes to the crook. And the crook pretends ABC Credit Union and uh, you talk to them and they, you know, they say, now wait a minute, wait a minute. We're, Security is very important to us, so I would like you to give me your social security number. Okay, okay. Now, what's your birthday? Because we don't, you know, we don't want to work with somebody that's the wrong person. It's your private information. Well, once they got your birthday and your social, they got you. You know, uh, uh, they can make make up credit cards in your name. Uh, they can steal your identity. They can they can pretend to be you. But here here's the main way around it. Anybody that sends me something on the internet and says, hey, we're the IRS, or actually I got a call that Social Security Administration is going to come in and, and arrest me yep. unless I send, send them money on a card uh, from, from a retailer. And uh, what I do is what I guess our phone book today is on, on the web. I'll Google it, you know, and if it's ABC Credit Union, I'll make sure it's the right site. That's ABC Credit Union. Or I'll, better yet, I'll get my statement and their number will be on the statement that I paid bills month after month. After month. I'll call that number yeah. and, and check on, on the one. And that's you definitely go, a safer way because we're, we're starting to see a lot of sites popping up that look like the bank. Absolutely. That jump up, they do a great job of making it jump up even ahead of the local bank. I know I talked to a woman the other day who 
uh, started chatting with the bank and they wanted her to give them money to do a transaction for her during COVID. And I did the checking and it was not her bank. And so unfortunately she had already given out her account information to them. So it's very oh, yeah. similar to what you're yeah. talking about and how important it is that you have to know who you're dealing with and the steps you have to take to make sure you know that it's really the right folks that are safe to deal with, right? Yeah, and while you're saying that, can we point out, folks, uh, don't be ashamed to admit when you make a mistake. We've all made mistakes. Mm -hmm. But the, the minute that you think you've given somebody information where they're gonna steal money out of your account, call the bank or credit union, have them freeze that account immediately. You can even go to, uh, in addition to that, go to uh, the credit bureaus yes. uh, and, and ask them, uh, give them an alert to watch out that your information's been compromised. Now, I've had that happen to me. Uh, my wife's purse was stolen. All of our credit cards, checkbooks, and everything, but we had them turned off in one hour. And, and in that hour, they had tried to buy a $500 TV at a retail store. And we stopped it all, even stopped the, the phone. We had to get all new credit cards and uh, checking accounts, but at least they didn't steal our money. Yeah. Let me pick it back on what Dan's saying, because it is so important. Uh, people get so ashamed once they find out they've been scammed, so much so that only 26% of scams are typically ever uh, reported. Mm -hmm. um, we see it with our seniors, Dan, that uh, they think that they're, if they if they fail for it, then they don't want to tell their children because their children might take their decision making power away, and it's just scary. But you admitted that that your wife's purse had been stolen. Well, my debit card got stolen, and we're the experts, right? And you know these people are out at twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. They're better than what we are, and so it is so important to report this stuff so that we can jump on it, tell you where to go so that we can really stop the bleeding. The truth of the matter is that people of all ages are vulnerable. Now, we have a lot of seniors now. I'm a senior, 68 years old, not ashamed to admit it. And, and that's why we get a lot of attention. But I, I'm, t I'm here to tell you, people that are 30, 40, 45, they get cheated all of the, the time too. The only thing is they got time to make their money back. And somebody my age, if I'm cheated out of my life savings, I don't have time. Yeah. No. And I heard one time that the uh, group that scam for the most amount of dollars are uh, doctors. <laughs> uh, because, you know, yeah. before they retire, they don't have the time to review the stuff, but they have a little bit of disposable income. Now, those guys went to college a whole lot longer than I did, and they were <laughs> scammed, and I feel better about myself. And, and since we're, I think the word that I keep hearing from both of you is verifying. So since we're still in the identification section, you know, let's just reiterate, Dan, with your office, you know, something, we're talking about other calls too, but just to hone in on the investment opportunities, many of these take place by phone. Is that right? That's where, is that where the well, majority? That, I think that comes out of BBB study on uh, the scam alert. Uh, most crimes are committed on phones. While we're talking about the, the phone, let me get mine. <laughs> this right here is a computer. Yes. A marvelous right. instrument. I've, I've gotten so I pay all my bills, it, you know, on my phone or anything. Uh, we have some people that work with FBI and everything, and a lot of our phones, uh, people can listen in on us all the time. I know that for a, a, a fact. Uh, I've talked to my wife about a product, and it pulls up on, on her phone. <laughs> I'm going to tell you how it happens, simple, and that's why I'm saying uh, yeah. if you want privacy, uh, you might keep your camera, put a piece of tape over your camera on your phone and your computer because somebody may be watching you. Your telephone and your private, this gets complicated, okay? Your, your, your privacy on your phone may be compromised, so uh, like I said, if you want privacy, uh, turn your camera down or uh, put a piece of tape over it uh, and on your computer. What they do is go through your Wi-Fi router. When they first install it, you probably should have changed the password, which is not an easy thing to do. It's mm -hmm. not that bad if you got somebody that uses computers all the time. They can call uh, your cable provider. But you go in there and change that password. Well, they what they do is they come through your Wi-Fi system to your telephone. And uh, so there is no privacy, folks. No. Be yeah. careful what you say. Be careful what you do. 
I was just going to say, I, you know, I think that what really ties us all together is the, the advances we've had in technology. And, you know, we saw a time where things went to email. Now they're back to the phones. And it ties back to what you were talking about, both of you, before with caller ID spoofing. And just to make sure people understand that there's apps and technology people can use to change the caller ID, caller ID information that you're seeing. And that's why we're saying you have to go re-verify the right number for anyone that calls you that is offering you an opportunity of any sort so that you can know who you're talking to, confirm what they're telling you. But we always like to say, like they say in the military, trust but verify and use our organizations as your other uh, resource or one of the resources to make sure you know exactly what you're being offered, that you're being offered something that's uh, been reviewed and is uh, registered with the Alabama Securities Commission, see if Better Business Bureau has information, make sure there's no history of problems. And that's really important in making sure that people are, are protecting themselves. You were saying, don't be afraid to report a scam. I think it's also important to talk about the next word or the letter. <laughs> the most powerful word we have in our vocabulary. No. <laughs> so it's okay to say no, is that right? That is exactly right. Not only do you own your front door, you own your telephone, you own your email, you own your computer. And it's no longer about being impolite. It's about safety. And if more people said no, we would, we would say less scams. But it's not only about saying no, it, it's not only about saying no when we're sitting here on this, you know, conference, because it's easy then. But, well, when we get into high pressure sales, Mr. Dan, we know that those are rough, right? Yeah, what if someone says that I have to decide right now where I'm going to lose what sounds like a fabulous opportunity? Can I tell you a little story about a scientist up in North Alabama? Sure. He, he was a genius, and uh, I, I had provided training to him about checking things out and everything, and we talked about how they keep calling you and some of these people, because if it's an investment, they're, they're, they want a large piece of your, it's a big chunk of money that they're going to take from you. So they call them and call them, become friends with them, pray with them on the phone. And they go get them under the ether is, is uh, what we say, they wear them down. But anyway, I provide training uh, to this gentleman and it wasn't Monday morning, it was on Saturday. Monday morning, he called me, he says, I got to check this guy out. They need the money now. You see, and I said, uh, that doesn't sound good when they say they need the money now. You need to take yeah. time. He said, Yeah, but the opportunity is only available now. Well, th that's where you need to say no. But it, this was a coincidence. The guy checked it out, and I went to the website, and this guy's dancing. So he said, Send me 5,000, I'll triple it in three weeks. And, and it looked rather crazy to me because I'm in this business all the time. And, and uh, we checked that guy out, and that company was closed down eight years ago wow. by the federal authorities and put people in jail. They're out of jail and they're back in business. You know, and uh, we want to teach you to be more selective, to be no, more cautious. You, you know, send me information. Now they can uh, fake documents and everything, but if they, if they send the information, you check them out with the BBB, uh, uh, you verify their registration, you check with word of mouth, oh, nobody's ever heard of them. You know, that will help you make an informed decision and that will help you protect your money. Absolutely. You just need to pump the brakes and you need somebody to talk to. You know, in this time of social distancing and this crazy pandemic, it's, uh, it's really kind of bred this new sense of loneliness that scammers are taking advantage of and they're preying on it. See, scammers are opportunistic people and they read the news and they know what's going on and they will really work on your loneliness. And it's, it can be either from, you know, unfortunately I, I've done a lot of work with the department of human services and, in, in Georgia, and we see exploitation of senior citizens from, man, just outright just getting money from them, but also forcing people to sign over power of attorneys. Mm, and if yeah. anybody's forcing you to do that, please find somebody to talk to and, and pump the brakes because that's illegal. And it can even be, if it's not your area agency on aging, it can be your local police. If they have, a, uh, they have detectives in, in, uh, or it could be your sheriff's office. 
you know, and, and don't don't give up uh, checking checking somebody out. Yeah, and I would say, isn't it a red flag if someone's trying to tell you that they're going to be there to help you more so than your own family members? They're trying to keep you from talking with your family members and that you're to trust them. And this is someone you've just met versus, you know, your family who hopefully is there to look over your well-being. Well, and, and what I'm hearing, Michelle, is the next thing you're going to tell me is they're in love with me and they want to marry me. Oh, man. And I was about to ask you if you could talk a little bit about something similar to investment scams, but it's investment of the heart. Oh, man. This one, uh, I talked with a truck driver one time. I actually talked with his sister because she was so worried about him. And he had met this girl online, which is the new way to meet people. And there's some legitimate ways to do that. But anytime there's legitimate ways to do something, there's going to be somebody scamming the system. Well, he has met this girl, and there just kept being little things to where he needed to send her a little bit more money, a little bit more money, a little bit more money, to the point that he refinanced his house. He did this, he did that. Right. And it was, I want to say it was in upwards of about $400,000. And it was all from a heart connection, because no one likes to be alone. And these people know exactly what to say. They're not only saying it to you, they're saying it to other people. But if somebody's coming in and they're trying to place a wedge between you and your family and they are your knight in shining armor or your new princess, I would, I would ask you to pump the brakes again because that is a, you know, not only are you looking at making a bad financial decision, but let's just, I mean, matters of the heart, they sting and they scar pretty bad. So I think, uh, Dan, don't you have a story about a, an insurance guy? or? Oh, yeah, it, this was a true story. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, the, the insurance man wasn't, he wasn't a fraudulent deal, but that doesn't mean that it was an acceptable sales practice, okay? So uh, a handsome young man uh, got in contact with a, a lovely lady about 78 years old that was a widow. And he wanted to sell her an insurance annuity. He was from Georgia. She lived on the other side in Phoenix City, okay? So after he got talking to her every month, once a month, he would bring her a little flower <laughs> and a bag, a, win, a Wendy's hamburger and a Frosty. And she thought he was just the most wonderful man in the world. So she called me and she said, well, you know, I want to check him out. And I checked him and he was licensed to sell in, in Alabama. And I said, well, what's he selling me? And I said, do you know what type of annuity this is? Because we had annuities can be really good and there's, there's good ones and there's ones that are not so good, but some of them have uh, like, if you get sick and need your withdraw some money out, that they could have a 25% pellet penalty, you know, and they, they vary and all this type of stuff. And another thing, this lady had in her whole life savings was a, happened to be $100,000, okay? So she was going to put all this in annuity. Now, I can't give uh, investment ad advice, but I, I, I can teach people about products. And I said, you think you want to put your whole cash position in one investment anyway? And I said, are you sure this guy uh, is so fond of you because you know he'll probably make ten thousand dollars on the sale. You sure that's not motivating him to bring you Wendy's and a flower every month? You see, and uh, to tell you the truth, it was really difficult. She didn't want to hear that he wasn't the yeah. most wonderful person in the world. So us, us older people need love too, and that's what the that can be the problem. <laughs> well, and I think that goes right into our next letter, right? Because mm. because G stands for gifts. Gifts, and so I know if we were playing uh, bingo right now and we're talking about gifts, I would ask, can you guys tell me anything that's free these days? That's truly free with no strings attached. I would uh, maybe air, I think <laughs> air, unless you need to put it in your tire, and then you have to pay money for it. <laughs> Can you think of anything that's free, Dan? Like truly free? Uh, your salvation, if you believe in a higher authority. 
Well, I like that answer, but... <laughs> but you still have to live a certain lifestyle, I think. Well, I was going to say, and I love it when people answer this way, is, you know, it is free for the taking. It's just already been paid for. There you go. There you go. So, but but not, in most cases, down here on uh, planet Earth, somebody uh, is giving you something for that, that what they call reciprocity. Yeah. Did I pronounce that right? That yeah. means that that uh, you knocked on my door, and and, and which which I don't open the door for anybody, but uh, you knocked on my door, and it, and this guy did this a few years ago, knocked on my door, and I opened the door and handed me some flowers, and a little box of candy. He said, "How you doing today?" You know. So right away he was trying to get me to open up, but he gave me something. I owe him something back. Mm -hmm. Right. And in our southern hospitality, we're terrible at this. And people know it because you think that somebody may, you know, in our southern nature, it's we're very polite and you try not to inconvenience anyone or, or displace anyone and appreciate the fact that other people took time to notice you or recognize you. And so in that, if I, if I get a gift, then I, I'm, I'll tend to listen to somebody a little bit longer as to not to appear rude or not appear ugly because, you know, that little boy, he thought of me. He stopped and he got a Wendy's hamburger and he got a Frosty. Now, I secretly have to admit, if you want to get to my heart, you bring <laughs> yeah, a Frosty on a monthly basis. <laughs> that might do it, huh? I don't what have $100,000, but I'll give you something. What about these uh, things that mainly it's postcards in the mail, but it could be a phone call too, where you get invited for a free meal, a lunch or a dinner. What about, yeah, what about those types of opportunities? There's no free lunch. And, and by the way, a lot of those are legitimate. Uh, so in other words, what they're saying, what they're selling uh, a lot of times is, is, is not a fraud, but uh, uh, a lot of insurance, uh, realty sales, for these uh, uh, timeshares. I see sometimes things. for energy, pro energy yeah. savings come, products. Come in, I'm going to give you a free education on estate planning, and I'm going to buy you, you and your wife supper, okay? And uh, that the supper is going to be free, and the education is going to be free, but some sometime they're going to get you to sign your name and phone number, and in a couple of days, you're going to get a call at home, say, hey, I want to come over and talk to you about this great opportunity so it's not free. It's a, they're trying to generate sales. Is the foot in the door? Yeah. You know, I'm not really good at saying no. Uh, I'll get aggravated because, you know, people will try and wear me down. But, and that's why I try and stay away. Let's say for, you know, a, a Walt Disney World trip for seven days that costs $199. Yeah. I've just got to sit through a two-hour presentation. Well, I'm not going to do well in that situation. I'm not going to just sit there and I'm going to want to leave. I'm going to want to get antsy. I'll probably get aggravated. Or it could go the other way where I think the deal is so good that I just give me two. And, uh, and, and the pressure is tremendous. I've had people, I'm not talking about any hotel chains, but some major ones that went for these timeshare uh, lectures where you only had to sit in for two hours. And if you didn't sit in for the two hours, they were going to charge you three times as much for the hotel room that they followed the people around the hotel for two or three days trying wow. to sell something. You know. <laughs> and I also say from when my time when I was in Southeast Florida, be, be wary of the ones that give you uh, drinks, alcoholic drinks, because you, if you uh, enjoy those drinks, you might make decisions that are different from the ones you would make if you were not feeling quite as happy. Or you could get drugged. You could get the, that's very uh, true yeah and, and you don't know these people so no. well i think that brings us to spelling our puppy's name all we right know. we're down to o others can you guys kind of help explain how it, this can involve others and and how you really need to uh, uh, be wary of people who might even build a relationship in your life that's it and my mama you know, it goes back to teaching when I was a, a young boy. And, of course, she would always hit me with, uh, I bet if your friends went and jumped off a cliff, you'd go and do it too. <laughs> you know, you know, and, and then she would follow it up later with, just because it's right for somebody else doesn't mean it's right for you. Good and words. I can't, yeah, exactly. We can't stress this enough in the fact that 
it is still a true principle today. And we're about to show you evidence of this to where you're seeing it all the time. You're not even realizing sometimes that you're seeing it. And yet you, you look at it and you almost get sucked in. Like um, I'm seeing Facebook posts being shared about uh, somebody ordered too many cars and because of coronavirus and you're a good person, all you have to do is share this. Well, you see that 20 of your friends shared it. So what does it hurt to share yours? Or maybe you, um, oh my goodness, this is, this is really bad when we see it in Facebook Messenger and says, hey, I saw your name on a government grant yeah, and you're eligible for this. And it, and it just deteriorates really fast when your name was never there and that's not even your friend contacting you. Yeah. But and I, I think, I think Dan has seen some examples even in in religion, religious surroundings, oh, yeah. isn't that right, Dan? Yes, yes because uh, we're here, the Bible man. Belt. We, we, our, our church. I came from uh, Michigan, and uh, uh, a big church was a hundred people in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> Down here, they say, "Oh, our church is not that big. There's 300 uh, members." So, uh, uh, you know, uh, somebody will come into one of these churches and uh, uh, get the confidence of the leadership. Back in 2002. Uh, less than a mile from where I'm sitting right here, uh, this gentleman come in and he got the preacher on his side and uh, it was a congregation of 500 people. And he had a big dream that he was going to buy and sell land and they got everybody in the church to get loans on their houses and uh, give all their, all their money. I mean, there was a lot of people that gave a lot more money than they had and they raised 3 million and he was going to uh, make that into 15 million. And uh, him and eight people, that was a surprise, eight other people in the church that had been upstanding members for years got involved. And they all started taking extravagant vacations to look for these great land deals that were going to make the church so much money that they could yeah. build a super, super church with a nine-hole golf course behind it and a Harley Davidson restaurant in a, in a, in a kid's uh, uh, diner in, in, inside. And uh, they, they used all the money. I mean, it was when one of the, the people on the board that was spending this money uh, let their child drive a brand new Corvette to school that they had bought. Wow. And everybody says, they never had money like that. Somebody called the Alabama Securities Commission. By the way, our numbers are at the end of the briefing. Mm -hmm. They called us and said, this doesn't sound right. And then it went all downhill from there. We prosecuted uh, nine, nine people, the one kingpin, is uh, still in jail. Uh, his uh, girlfriend was previously a stripper, I, I believe, and uh, he had spent money on her when she was in that business. And all that money was gone, and some people lost their houses because they had second mortgages on it, and, and the church uh, lost everything they had. So if somebody yes. in your church has an investment deal, check them out privately. Yeah. Uh, give, us, give us a call and say, hey, they're offering to take some of our money do something with it, make more money. That's an investment, folks. That's right. It doesn't right. have to be a, 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 a company on the corner. It's anybody that offers right. to take you money, do something with it, and give you more money back. And it can vary greatly. Dan, I can think of two cases over the years when we've worked together that range from an individual that claimed that they were going to help you sell organic tomatoes and oh, earn a yeah. living which was bogus to someone who had an investment in a shopping mall that was supposedly going to be erected in Tennessee. And we saw people doing second mortgages on their home or dipping into yes. uh, life savings, college funds, because they thought that they were actually going to be able to grow those funds. And instead they lost them. And so this has a major impact potentially on your life. Like you said, especially as you're getting older, um, it's going to be difficult to crawl out of those holes. So that's why it's so important for us to talk about these things and make sure that people understand, you know, sometimes you get a simple call, which still isn't that simple. If it's uh, you want a sweepstakes and you know, you didn't enter sweepstakes, it's pretty easy to spot that scam, but some of these can be pretty complicated. And this is why it's so important to talk about the O and others, because sometimes your friends may have become victims without realizing it and pull you into something before you know if you trust them but they didn't do their homework now you're going to be experiencing very similar situations or they may not have been as good a friend as you thought if they build a relationship with you over time and some people 
can be patient if they think it's going to be lucrative at the end, right? Well, what, what happens about this friendship? That your friend may really think that they're making money and they may, may be uh, receiving statements every month, you know, because you can copy any bank's logo and make up fake statements. So they may think, hey, I'm, I'm sharing this with my friend Jason and, and Michelle because I like them. You know, so it's a genuine thing. And that, that's how they use this uh, social consensus thing uh, to cheat people. So I always said, uh, if my mother tried to sell me something, I would check her out. <laughs> <laughs> and we probably sound like some skeptics to you. Or maybe we sound like we're jaded. Well, we are. Because we see it all the time. And we're tired of, we're, we're tired of people like you getting taken advantage of. It's not right. We don't do our jobs for the money. We could probably make a whole lot more money scamming people because we know all the scams, but we do our jobs because we want to help people. And it sounds crazy from the viewpoint where we're sitting at and where you're sitting at right now that any of this would ever happen. Like, who's stupid enough to fall for this? Anybody. I would, yeah, <laughs> I would see it coming a mile away. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, what happens is either your heart gets involved or – the, the two ingredients that we see most that drive scams is greed and need. Um, when you're on a fixed income and you don't know how to make ends meet and somebody's promising you, you know, to relieve right. you your, your financial burdens, but they just need a little bit of money. Yeah. Uh, we see, we've seen it from low economic status to the wealthy. But what I'm telling you is that anybody is susceptible to scams and uh, you really need to remember our acronym. And that yeah. acronym is BINGO. Again, beware. Beware of anything that, that looks crazy. Beware of those big winnings. And you know where you can check it out. If I was to invest any money, I would definitely check it out with our Securities Commission. Because they're there and they're willing to help. And identification, you know, Microsoft still isn't calling anybody for tech support. But a lot of people are giving them... Uh, access to their computer every day. That's uh, right. And what's the most powerful word we have in our vocabulary, guys? No. Oh, that's exactly right. I'm raising three girls and I hear it all the time. <laughs> but it, it's true. <laughs> um, you know, the worst part about being scammed is sitting back and realizing that you enabled it. Because you, you're responsible and you've got to pump the brakes and stop it. Because if anything feels bad, stop it, turn to somebody else. And, uh, you know, I had somebody tell me one time when I asked them what, what's a free in this world, um, you know, Dan, they said uh, body odor. <laughs> that was the only thing they could think of, and unfortunately, yeah. they were right. And, you know, the air around here when the Bradford pears are blooming, I, I could almost import some, some good stuff. I'd be willing to go. play, and I certainly, I think some people are blessed with enough body odor. We don't need any more, but, um, you know, I have yet to come across a truly free gift that, you know, didn't have some strings attached. And then, you know, like we said, just because it's right for somebody else, the O, the others, just because it's right for somebody else doesn't mean it's right for you. Or that you're someone you know has done their homework and checking something out. So make sure you're relying on your own research and homework before you invest in anything. And we said it's really important to make sure you're checking these um, offers out. So here's some great contact information for the Alabama Securities Commission. So this would be, Dan, you said who would use um, your agency if they need to check something out? Well, if it involves in investing or something in Alabama or you just don't know, give us a call. We'll help you out. Okay, you know, great. You and we do have Dan Lord. <laughs> Dan is there to answer your questions. And we also have an office in Georgia. Um, RBB also covers parts of South Carolina, and each state does have their commission. And then um, we have the website up there for um, the Alabama Securities Commission. You can also use uh, FINRA at the federal level, and they have, I know, a service called Broker Check, where you can check people who are offering securities to make sure that they are licensed and registered. You can look also to make sure there haven't been any concerning um, just, uh, issues that have been handled by that board or by that agency in the past so that you can make sure that you feel good about who you're dealing with. And then Jason, I know we have the BBB's information up there as well. That's right. And, about that? and the people that need to call us, 
Um, if you take your two fingers and you stick it right here and you feel a bump every now and again, if you've got one of those, then you can call us. We would, we would love for you to call us. So basically, if you've got a pulse, we're here for you. <laughs> and we've got several, several links, several contacts, and a whole lot of good friends. Yeah, and one, one thing we just want to add on, our, if you visit our website, look for Scam Tracker. Um, that is a site where you can, you can both add information about any, any scams you've either fallen for or someone has attempted against you so that you can share that with others, as well as look up things that are happening, whether it's throughout the world or just um, in your area. We'll have a map so you can check and see where someone has reported from or where they say it's from so that you can learn more about what's happening. It's a great way if you check something out as a starting point. If someone calls you and says you did win a sweepstakes and you look here and see that 100,000 other people also reported that, then that's pretty much going to tell you you're not alone in this and that's probably not going to be true. That's right. So, and I think, you know, since we're talking about romance scams, we may wrap this up with also saying make sure you're using your head and not your heart. You know, the these opportunities may sound great and we never want someone to overlook a chance to invest in something that's really viable and a great option, but we want to make sure you're taking your time to investigate before you invest and that you feel good about where you're putting your hard earned money because we know that we all work hard for our money and we want it to go in the hands of good companies and away from scammers.